more news after a brief... SCTV now begins its programming day. Yes, it's SCTV, beaming its two cents worth across the nation. Starring Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. And Martin Short. Television as you've never seen it before. This is SCTV. If it's the classics you want, we've got it all right here on SCTV. Ed Grimley gives a stirring performance as Oliver. I would like some more, please. What? <laughs> oh, this is a school for pickpockets. Pickpockets? Well, you can just count me out. Oh, he's really moving now. With Sid Dithers as the villainous Fagan. In Charles Dickens' immortal Oliver Grimley. Then it's the New York film actor's stunning adaptation of Mary Chase's Pulitzer Prize winning stage comedy, Harvey. You talking to a hooker? Huh? You got a hooker up here? Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Harvey! Harvey? Who the hell's Harvey? He's an animal, a big rabbit. He's sitting right here, only you can't see him, Carmine. I got a kid brother talking to an imaginary animal. I'm... Ah! And finally, the movie that stunned a nation. I'm in trouble, and you're the only man who can help me. I'm listening. Keep riffing. Two weeks ago, my daddy was murdered in a very mysterious manner. Where do I come in? I need protection. Just until the reading of the will is over. Private Eye, Vic Arpeggio goes into blackface and discovers racial bigotry in a southern town. What the hell is she looking at? Never seen a good-looking black guy before? It's the 1950s blockbuster, Black Like Vic. Oliver Grimley, Harvey, and Black Like Vic. We've got the classics on SCTV. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Guy Caballero, owner and president of SCTV. And this is my station manager, Edith Brickley. Hello. How's it hanging? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Pledge Week here at SCTV. We're going to be interrupting the programming throughout, and we have some fine programming for you. Tonight we have a special film, a classic. It's entitled The Steve Bashaka Story. Oh, it's a good one, too. Yeah. It's a black and white little dandy, isn't it? The first one ever made with sound. <laughs> well, not the first one, no. It's an early sound film, a talkie. Oh. Uh, it's a classic, a vintage film. It's yeah. not new, that, that is. It's uh, rather old. Uh, it's been around a while. You yeah. might have seen it Much before. like me. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it is a great film. It's a wonderful film, and it's, it was the launching uh, point for a lot of the stars in the film, including the leading man, Les uh, Lonigan, I believe his name is. And yeah. He never got any work after this movie, though, because oh. he had little tiny hands and... and <laughs> Oh, you're yes. kidding, guy. Chick, that reminds me. I ever tell you I dated a fellow with tiny hands? No. I didn't. No. You know what they say about tiny hands, don't you? Tiny hands, tiny gloves. <laughs> <laughs> tiny gloves. I thought you were going to say something. I bet you did. <laughs> Save that for later, guy. You make me laugh. Uh, uh, Let's hope so. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you tonight uh, on Pledge Week, and... Uh, what we do here at SCTV is rely basically on your money. That's right. And you know why we need it now? We're broke. SCTV is busted zilch. We haven't got a pot to... Edith, hey, can you please get serious for a moment? I'm just trying to lighten everything up, guy. This isn't easy asking for money. We're just saying, please, get behind us in our hour of need. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the last person to get behind me was Mr. Prickley. Unfortunately, it was his hour of need. <laughs> right behind him. All right. Well, he's there. Well, he's there. Take it easy. What's gotten into you anyway? <laughs> Turn into Shecky Prickley, stand-up station manager. All right, please. We're All right. just trying to make it fun here and simple. Folks, during this show, you're going to see numbers flashing at the bottom of your screen. 
Pick up the phone. Make a pledge. Get SCTV back on its feet again. <laughs> it is absolutely right. And by doing this, you'll be partaking of the greatest gift of all, which is the gift of giving. Yeah. That's right, the gift of giving. Yeah. And uh, without further ado, now let's take a look at our classic film, The Steve Bishaka Story. And remember, the greatest gift of all is the gift of giving. <laughs> Show me a magic trick. Nothing out of my hat. Now watch this. Mm -hmm. Three travel brochures, count them. Mm -hmm. Now they're just two. Pathetic. Well, look, what did you expect on such short notice anyway? You think I'm Houdini? You never break it with your hands. Oh, yeah? What's this? I'm waiting. I just picked that guy's pocket. That doesn't impress me, Steve. Oh, lay off. Oh, yeah. You listen to this. You lay off. Nice comeback. Look, you seem pretty grouchy. Let's get something to eat. Oh, I just would rather walk through the city. Steve, 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 the Steve, somebody's talking to you. Just ignore it. Don't pay any attention to it. Steve. Get out of here. Get off the old guy. Uh, ignoring. Don't pay any attention to him. Steve. Over here. Just, just keep walking. Uh, he, Over to your keep right. Keep walking and ignore him. I saw you put your head in his pocket so you wouldn't... Don't wait, pay any attention what to him and he'll go see? away. Tell me. Traveler's checks. Beat it. <laughs> that wasn't funny. I thought that was funny. Anyway, honey, I, I'm thinking lately about changing my career. Perhaps stepping up. Going into mail fraud? Mail fraud is small potatoes, honey. I want... I want to run for U.S. Senator. What did you say? U.S. Senator. U.S. Senator? That chance! Steve! Steve! Over yeah. here! Where are you going, my friend? Washington, D.C. Eventually. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Bobby Bittman here with a guy I'm proud to call my very dear friend, Mr. Jackie Rogers Jr. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> and may I say it is such an honor for me to share the stage with, in my mind, the world's greatest performer living, Mr. Bobby Bittman, right here. Thank you, Jackie. I appreciate that. I really do. And I'm so glad you prefaced that compliment with the word living, because I think it would have been remiss of us had we not mentioned the immense talent of your late father and my very dear friend, the great Jackie Rogers Sr. Thank you, Bob. Anyway, we're here to talk about SCTV, I think. She <laughs> is in trouble. And she needs your support. You know, Jackie's so right, friends, because that little station with the big heart needs your help. You're so right, Rob. You know, when I got a call from Guy Caballero asking me to come here to do some station saving, I turned to my living lady, Angelique, and said, tell the powers that be that Jackie will be there to respond to their call. And I, I bet you were glad that call wasn't collect. <laughs> <laughs> totally ad lib. <laughs> anyway, you know, I just want to say something about the medium, because that's why we're here. In particular, let me just say, I'm talking about SCTV, because Jackie and I have both spent many years performing here, and it, it's a courageous station. It's a station with courage, and that's why you've got to call, because they air programs that, you know, other stations just... They've don't... never compromised, is it, what you it know, is. That's, ex that's what I'm trying to say, and, and I'll tell you, you know, speaking of courage, there was a gal that came down here tonight, and I, we're so proud she did, yes. and it was somewhat of a surprise, because uh, she, as talented as she is, she's had a bumpy couple of years there, you know, and she's on the comeback trail and she's here tonight, so, and you're really going to want to pick up your phone. Let's bring her on now. Lola Heatherton is here, ladies and gentlemen. I love you! Lola. Bobby. 
You are just, you're looking too marvelous for words. You're really, you're really looking, you look sensational. We're so, uh, we're so glad to have you, dearie. And, and, you're, and you're doing well. And Jackie's here. Did you say hi to Jackie? No, no, He's no, here. No. There he is. Hi, there he is. Yes. Oh. <laughs> kissy, kissy, kissy. <laughs> you know, Lola, it's, you're just looking so marvelous, and we're glad you're here. And, and, and oh, you've, uh, you've, you've, you've so had a tough happy. time of it, haven't you? But I will do anything to come here and help SCTV. Because right now, SCTV needs a good shot. Which is something I used to need before I spent some time at the Betty Ford Institute. And and you were there with with uh, you were there when Liz was there and Pete Lawford and. Uh... Oh, Bobby, Jackie, I have never felt more part of show business as when I was at the Betty Ford Institute. There are some very very big biggies appearing there, and I was proud to be one of them. <laughs> but the point is, I never used to be able to make an appearance like this without a shot. <laughs> Let's face it, that's true, uh, and I don't need that anymore, as much. I mean, I'm not saying I'm cured. Okay, I never said I was. I'm not going on cold turkey or anything. No, no. Because no. that just wouldn't be wise. No, it's 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 a gradual thing. I know exactly what you are talking about. I have the same thing with the sun, for example. Mm -hmm. you know. And the only place I like cold turkey is on a sandwich with some mayo. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, pick up that phone and call because this gal here is going to do a number. She's going to perform, and that's something that you know we haven't seen in a couple of years. So, and so do yourself a favor. Put a VHS or a beta in your machine, tape it, the lady's going to sing. Oh, it's yeah. magic moments. When Ladies and gentlemen, Lola Heatherton, right here. Please phone in and help, won't you? Because SCTV is really, really going through some problems. Leo, you can start now. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I used to consider performing a kind of therapy. You know, I thought it was some kind of release, but it never was because I used to give everything I had to you. I used to pour it out and give it all to you, and sure, you were satiated, but I was left empty with nothing. And thanks to therapy, I've learned to, to do something for myself, and tonight I'm going to do something for myself. I'm going to sing it the way I feel it. I'm going to get it out. For you. And mostly for me. <laughs> it's a man's world. It's a man's world. But it wouldn't be nothing. Wouldn't be nothing. Without a woman or a girl. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't, and you know it, don't you? Let me tell you something. You know, man thinks about, thinks about a little bit of baby, 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 girl, and a baby boy. And man makes them happy. Because man made them toys. Dangerous toys, stay away from them. But how can man make everything? How can he make everything? I'll tell you how, because man takes that money he makes, and he makes twice as much as any woman in this studio, and he takes and he buys drugs from another man. Because it's a man's world. It's a man's world, but it's nothing, nothing, nothing! Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, it works. It, they weren't lying, this works. It, I feel great. I don't need any more. The anger's out. I, uh... Leo, we don't need any more, because that's, uh, that's enough. I, I think I've... Leo, we can stop. Leo! <laughs> Leo, read my lips! Stop! <laughs> Lola Heatherton, go back to the movie. Pick up your phones and call because, uh, because, you know, after that, we really, you've got to send in some money. And now we're going back to the Steve Bashega story. It is a good one. Thank you, Lola. <laughs> so, Professor, I thought I'd have some entertainers campaign Hang for Hang on, me. Steve. We're not even on camera. Hmm? I tell you, I hate working with this director. I'm heavily influenced by David Lee and a lot of slow pans. We'll have to wait, we'll have to wait. We're over by the lights, so it's pan, 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 time consuming. We're down here. Very good, here we go. So, anyway, Steve, the man said to Tea me. Tea time. Sorry, honey, you jumped your queue. You don't come in yet. I have a very dramatic scene with Steve here before you come in. Wait till I pick up the potatoes, please. That's right, you jumped your queue. <laughs> 
All right, await my cue. Good. So, Professor, I hear Ozzy Osbourne has a new 45. It's supposed to be pretty good, actually. It's, it's going to be a big hit, I hear. Really big. Oh, cow dung, Steve. Osborne can't play with beans. I was fumbling with his fingers. Too busy biting the heads off chickens, if you ask me. <laughs> hey. And he has a tin ear. Dwayne Eddy. Now, there's an axe picker, Steve. A man after my own heart. And he'll be making a comeback, too. Just like Neil Sedaka. Well, Sedaka was lucky. No, he made a big comeback, Steve. You mark my words. Dwayne Eddy will be back. What do you know about music anyway? You're just a cheap pickpocket. I think you missed a line, dear. Now, honey, I think you missed your line. Hurry up. For God's sakes, woman, say something. Sure is hot today. That's not your line. You're not even standing in the right place. Where should I stand? You're supposed to be standing behind me. That's the way, right there. Mm, ring the church bells. Ding. Has she gone insane? Where did you study acting? Look, dear, why don't you take a ten-minute coffee break? We'll call you when we we need you. Ah! I seem to be foaming at the mouth again, Steve. I foam at the mouth every time I think of Jackie Gleason. Now, he should run for senator. Can you imagine what his speeches would be like? I'm telling you... Whoa! I, oh, what a filibuster that would be! <laughs> He's a regular nut. <laughs> As opposed to who, Steve? Someone like you? Now listen, politicians have to have, have a sense of humor today, a catchphrase like, where's the beef, or something funny like that. Now, meanwhile, I... Now, what is she doing now? I'm pouring the wine. You don't pour the wine? We're not even finished up beer yet. Look, here, sit down. Sit down here. I'll show you what you're supposed to do for... Here, watch me. I'm not doing very well, am I? Well, no, dear. To, to be honest, you stunk up the room. Just turn it, Mac. Just, just turn them right around there so I can just see. A little over. That was... Hello? I'm Libby Wolfson. We're back. I guess you know me from the You Show, and this is my dear friend Troy Soren and media personality, and we're here to say help. Where are the phone calls? There are no phones ringing. It is absolutely mind-boggling. I don't understand it. I don't know what you're trying to prove. In a way, I'm feeling anger, but I'm trying to be cool because I know that anger doesn't get people to phone. But in this respect, I'm angry because if you do not phone, then nothing is going to change on the network that you watch. You're I mean, going to get please. the same pap you watch All every day. All the time, day. the same pap. The sa if you want to watch somebody like Nell Carter and a bunch of teenagers running around the house, please, don't call. Don't do us any favor. Please. Which is not to say that Nell Carter, given the right vehicle, can't be wonderful. I mean, I saw her name misbehaving four times, and she really, I mean, she sings, she fills the room. No, but on television, true, she is not effective. She's it's not boring. Effective. That's right. It's gone to totally the point, boring. honestly, where I, I, had, I had three televisions. I won't even watch them anymore, and I make a living on television. I shine on television. I can't even watch it. That's how bad it is. I okay. have five televisions, but five I swear they're not on. Five televisions you have. We bought a new one for the den. Really? Where would you put it? We moved the little couch, the deco couch, against the window. And it's, it oh, makes the works. room bigger. That yeah. works. Anyway, we have made a living on television, reaching out and helping people. It's now your turn to help. Is that monitor working, or are my hips that big? Because <laughs> I don't think it is. Turn it around. Turn it around nervous. if it upsets her. Just turn Making it around. Me anyway, please reach out to us. If you were to call, it would be like hearing, thank you, Libby. That would make me... I said, turn it around, please. It's making me crazy. I can't do what I want to do. <laughs> I look old. Just turn it around. The, 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 the networks aren't going to change. We have got to survive. We've got to go back to our film. Please, we're begging you. We'll do anything. I'll get down on my knees and sing Swanee. While you're and down there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Watch the movie. Enjoy it. Thank you. That. Am I that fat? Wait, just just tell me, am I that I cannot fat? Cannot believe you said that. Ripped him. It damn near killed him. That's a very funny. Boy, whatever's on his fork sure look good, huh? No, too sticky. Mm. 
I thought you got finger bowls in Chinese restaurants. No, the custom is to wipe your fingers on the waitress's cheek, see? Oh. I'd like to try that if we ever get served. I know what you mean. Uh-oh, here she comes. You order, because I'm shy, okay? Would you like to hear a funny joke? Everybody's a comedian. Well, this burglar goes into this Chinese restaurant and says, give me all the money you've got. And the waiter says, do you want it to take out? Oh. Turn around. What do you want? I just want to talk about you behind your back. Well, hurry up. I haven't got all day. You know, from this angle, she looks just like a bimbo I picked up in Paris. That chance. Me turning a trick for the likes of you. I hope that wasn't a check. Well, let's see. It better not be the check, because she didn't give us our dinner. I'm not going to pay for food unless I get my dinner. I don't give away money for nothing, you know. This is either a telephone number or a measurement. One of the two. I can't make it out. Well, i got to catch a bus. Oh, good. There's one. Well, got to go. 36, 23, 103. Huh? Nice cat. Mm. Ooh, baby, come over here. Mm. 3D, come here, come on, come over here. What do you want? You own quite a place here. Uh, I'll bet you're rolling in dough. I pack in some pesos. What's it to you? How do you like to bankroll me for a U.S. Senator? Got a funny slogan? How's this? I've got no buns, but my beef stands tall. It's a pretty catchy slogan, but you're too late. I've already decided to back Dickie Lee for Senator. Ever appear in the nude? What? In your birthday suit. Well, I once posed for a French postcard. I bet that was something to see. Let's play hide and seek, okay? I start. One steamboat. Two steamboats. I'll drop over to see you later. Maybe you'll change your mind about backing in. Ah! We need your support to keep SCTV on the air. For without your money, we could no longer bring you live concert specials with big name groups like The Ramblers. could we bring you more of those hilarious situation comedies you've all grown to adore. Who is she? And when it comes to late night variety programming, where would we be without the critically acclaimed Sammy Modlin Show? Wackiness, zaniness, and just downright fun. Combined with provocative, in-depth interviews with hard-to-get guests like Henry Kissinger. Listen, what about Watergate? What do you think about that? I don't want to talk about Watergate. <laughs> Laughter, music, the best in variety programming. So make a pledge and send in that money, because we've got it all, all on SCTV. Be there. <laughs> I don't hear phones. Those telephones aren't ringing. <laughs> Count Floyd here. And I'm Woody Tobias Jr. And we're enjoying this fine, vintage, classic film, The Steve Beshaker Story. Boy, this film is... Oh! Boy, I'll tell you, the, the plot in this thing is, uh, well, 
Scary isn't the word I'm looking for. It's, it's... Convoluted. What? I believe the plot is somewhat convoluted. Well, maybe. You're, you're being kinder than I am, though, I'll tell you. I... Anyway, the problems with this plot are something like the, the problems we're having with SCTV right now in the pledge drive. And I think that we should address ourselves to that problem right now. We need you to call in and make your pledges. But I can understand why they wouldn't call in. Hmm? Why? Well, I know myself that being at home in my leisure hour and watching pledge drives such as this, that I'm watching the show and I want to call in, but I just don't. Because, you know, you get distracted. I'm watching the show, I see the number flashing, I go in and make myself a sandwich. But for some reason, I just don't call in. So I can understand why the people out there are seeing the number flashing, but they're not calling in, I can understand. What are you doing? You're giving them an out. We want them to call in. Floyd, I'm just acting as devil's advocate. Uh, all right, okay, but do me a favor, all right? Don't act as a devil's anything right now. Look, folks, we want you to call in and to show you we're sincere, we're going to give you a record album. If you donate more than $60, we'll give you an album by Ed Grimley. Ooh, it's a good one, too, believe me. It's, right. it's on Billboard right now. It's number 28. And with a, a bullet. Oh. oh, it's a good one. So, <laughs> you call in, you get that album, all right? Oh. But if you don't call in, we'll understand. <laughs> all right. Uh, forget what this jerk's saying, and let's take a look at Ed. Thank you, Count Floyd. When people phone in, it's very pleasant, I must say. So don't be afraid to go to your phones and pick them up and send in a pledge for sixty dollars or more and when you do you get a copy of my new album which is called did she call <laughs> which is kind of funny actually because if you call you get a copy of an album called did she call <laughs> is that mental or what <laughs> It's a concept album, really. It tells its own story. It's about a guy, a very nice guy, who's in love with a girl named Rhoda, but she just leaves him one day. It's the saddest departure of his life. She doesn't leave a note or nothing, and he is just left stranded amidst his own sorrow. And so, finally, he walks the streets, and uh, it, within sadness, he sings the title song, Did She Call? Did she call? Did she call? Please, Mr. Phone Booth, answer my request. I'm a man without a woman, much like a hotel without a guest. And then it goes on and it goes into a disco beat, which is always pleasurable at a get-together. So that's the album. I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, judge, just phone in and uh, make a pledge and uh, you'll get my album, Did She Call? <laughs> now, before Dickie gets it, do you understand the deal? Sure. The guy who makes you laugh harder is the guy you'll bankroll. Simple. This guy's cocky. At least Dickie be subtle. Hey, Dickie leaves the name? Politics the game. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Sure. Bum walks up to a guy in the street and says, give me a dollar for a cup of coffee. The guy says, why a dollar? He said, I only like cappuccino. Not <laughs> bad. Your fly is open. <laughs> Say, not bad for a broad. Uh, seriously, though, uh, what do you say we ditch this turkey, huh? He happens to be running for the Senate. Uh, why don't we leave him at home? Come on, let's bring him along. Hmm. I like your eyes. Another <laughs> 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 one like a jockey said, I only ride side saddle. Side saddle.
Pedro! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said! <laughs> Give it to the twit! But <laughs> 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 I'm thinking that's gonna be God, you're good, you're so very good. <laughs> I don't know whose gun that is. <laughs> oh, I wish I could walk straight. Mm, I'll leave a $500 tip, thus assuring good service next time. Well, Betty, who are you gonna bankroll? Neither of you. Neither, Neither of us. Neither of us. Oh, come hey, on. What are you, you talking better. about? You you're going... I'm broke. So long, suckers. Hey, what? Uh, well, I guess it's down to the bank tomorrow for a... Warm. Dickie. Doesn't it make you angry she pulled that stunt? Me? <laughs> Go figure, dames. They're all the same. Don't let it bother you. You know, she's probably up in the room laughing at us right now. Let's go up there and work her over. Come on. Uh, get even with her down at the restaurant. Order a big dinner, then stiffer. Come on. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> well, well, if it isn't Mr. Charisma, back here bumming me out, bumming her out, bumming everybody out with your bad attitude. Steve, can I talk to you for a moment? I hear your Senate campaign is going down the toilet. Well, Steve, there's a good reason for that. It's your face. You never change that same boring expression on it. Come on, smile. Come on, one little smile. Well, how's this? You never moved a muscle. Want my advice? Get a job where you work by yourself so you won't bum everybody out. Go uh, pushing a pooper scooper, uh, guarding a mausoleum. I really appreciate your advice, Dad. I, I don't have... Time to listen to your drivel. I've got a Shriners parade today. I'm the Grand Marshal. Professor. I I can't get out of politics. The thrill of the campaign trail. The excitement of the crowd. The whistle stop. Oh, shut up, Steve. You're a fool. Why, if you had any brains at all, you'd be watching me today in the parade. Food's on. I burnt the dinner. Mm. One thing about my daughter, Steve, she's not a very good cook, but what a set of bazoomers! Well, bon appetit! Well? Mmm, steak tartare, rather well done. That's it. Pledge night was a, a failure. Yep. You couldn't feed sparrows with the amount of cash we pulled in. How could you do this to us? 111 bucks. Ah, oh, forget it, guy. Don't let it eat you up. Don't you care? Don't you care that we work and slave to bring you the finest programming available? Nope. They don't care. And don't you care about the people here, all the little people that work at SCTV? They could care less. What about Grimley and Earl Cannonbear? Where are they going to go after this is all over? Please, dear, don't waste your breath. I'm telling you, this, this, this SCTV has been a, a fortress to shield these little people from the harsh realities of life. Please, guy, let's not overdo it. What about Edith here? Where's someone like that going to find work after this is all over? Uh, hell, let's not get personal here. Thanks for nothing. Last but not least, what about me? Watashi. Guy Caballero. Where's an old war horse like me gonna go after this is all over? Oh, Guy, please don't let them see you like this. This is just what they want from you. That's it. That's it for SCTV. But I'll tell you something. You can thank that viewing public out there for this, Edith. Well, I did learn something, though. I did learn a hard lesson from all this. I learned that you can't count on the next guy. You know, if you want to make it this world, you've got to do it on your own. Now, I place my trust in you people out there. And what did it get me, huh? What did it get me? A one-way ticket to Panama. Oh, yes, I'm bitter. Bad bitter. But what is do I have? There was one glimmer of hope, one ray of sunshine to slice through that cloud and... I... This could be the one! Oh, don't tell me. Don't tell me there's someone out there that cares, actually cares. I got... 
it's for you guys. Oh, please, let this be the one. Pull through for mama. Get out. Oh, Conchita. Conchalis. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> uh, look, I can't talk to you. I'll talk to you in the office. I'll take the call back. Yeah. Right. Edith, wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, Barney, roll the music, would you, dear? Help Mama out. The final curtain has fallen. The death knell has been sounded. For without you, we were nothing. But believe me, you haven't seen the end of SCTV. Forever there are people who cry out for superior television, there will be an SCTV. Wherever mediocrity wears its ugly head, there will be an SCTV. Whether it's from a tiny station in a little town like Mellonville or a satellite somewhere in space, there will always be an SCTV. Good night and good luck. Jeez, I think that message really worked. Let's start counting the bread. Happy <laughs> days are here again. We're gonna have some. We're gonna have some. At all times. That's unbelievable. I've never seen anything like that before. Now, uh.